Hey guys, I recently showed you how to morph two objects within a lathe nerve. If you haven't seen it, I'll pop a link down below. And one of the questions that kept popping up was, Hey Sean, yeah. how can we morph the uh, textures during the actual animation? I'm glad you asked. That's exactly what we're here for. Good. I'm going to show you how we can also morph those textures during the animation, just like many of you guys have asked for. Let's jump straight in and see how it comes together. And me, I asked. <laughs> Hey guys, so like I said, we're going to have a look at how we can animate between two separate texture tags on the same object. So I thought a good way to demonstrate this, let's throw a plane into our scene here and change its orientation to minus Z. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create two textures here. My first one, I'm going to give it a nice bright purple color and our second, I think a green will work nicely. What I'm doing here is creating two obviously different colors so you can see the transition between the two. I'm then going to apply both these texture tags to our plane object. Now you can see what's happening here. Whatever the top material is on our object overrides the other one. So you can see here in our hierarchy, our green material is on top of that purple texture. So our entire plane is turning green. Now I want to show you a real simple technique to transition between these two. So the first thing I'll do is dive into my green material, turn on my alpha tag and give it a gradient into the texture. And you can see what that's instantly done is wherever there's black, it erases our material and shows that purple texture beneath it. So to set up the reveal, we're going to do some real simple keyframe animation. Let's select our white point And when we toggle down the gradient, we can actually set what percentage this white point is set at. So let's set that to zero and add a keyframe at frame zero there. And you can see what that's done is now made our whole plane green again. I'll then come forward 10 frames, apply another keyframe, and this is just gonna allow us to have that first 10 frames of our green plane. I'm then gonna come forward to frame 40, grab that white point in our gradient, and move it all the way along to 100 and add another keyframe. Now what I wanna do is split the difference between that keyframe we made at frame 10 and that keyframe we've just made at frame 40. So that's going to be 25. So let's move our white point all the way back over to 100. But this time as well, we're going to select that black keyframe and move it along to 50%. We can then come back to that keyframe. We made it frame 40, grab our black point in our gradient and also set that to 100. And now you can see when I hit play, we have this great animation morphing between those two materials. What I like to do is select all my keyframes here, right click and just set them to linear and this will remove any default easing that comes on your keyframes. Now what's great in, with the gradient is you have these different types and just by changing these types we instantly have different animation revealing the two textures based on those couple of keyframes we made. This is a real simple setup but really powerful for animating between those two textures. So this is the basis of this technique so now let's jump into another scene and I'll show you how we can apply this. Now, like you saw in the intro, we've got this nice little animation of this wine bottle morphing into a spray can. If you want to learn how to pull off this technique, I've got another video diving into how to set this whole thing up. So I'll pop a link down below and go and check that out. Now, out of that tutorial, a few questions popped up of how can we morph the textures at the same time? So we're going to apply that same technique that we just did with the plane to this object. So what I'm thinking is we want a nice glass texture for our wine bottle to start with. So let's add a new material, give it some transparency, and I'm just going to change my refraction to glass. It's a nice simple preset that comes in Cinema 4D, so we may as well take advantage of it. I'm then going to apply that to my wine bottle. What we now need is a new texture for when we morph into this spray can. So let's add a new material. And what I'm thinking, let's just give this something highly reflective. So let's go into our reflectance, add a Beckman, give it a bit of Fresnel, but I'm just gonna pull this down a bit just so it's a bit more reflective. And now you can see in our texture preview, we've got this highly reflective material. And by applying that to the spray can, it's actually overwritten that transparent texture we've applied to our wine bottle. So now what we need to do is set up that transition as this morph happens. So let's toggle open our scene here a bit. Let's have a look at our bottle morph. And we can see we've got some keyframes on the inheritance tag here. So that morph is taking place between frame 40 and 80. So it's during this time we also want to transition between our materials. So let's start at frame 40 here. 
And in our hierarchy, you can see on this lathe nerve, our, our reflective texture that was set for our can is on top. And that's the reason it's overriding that transparent texture. So let's open up our can texture and let's apply another alpha tag and give it a gradient. Now, just as before, we're gonna, we're gonna use frame 40 as frame zero for us. Now this time, what we wanna do, instead of setting our white point to zero, we actually wanna mask out this material first. So let's select our black point and set this to 100% and add a keyframe. And now what this has done, this is completely black. So our material is not showing up and you can see we've got that transparent texture back onto our wine bottle. Now the animation ended at frame 80. So let's do the same thing with our texture morph. Let's come to frame 80, grab that black point, move it over to frame zero and add another keyframe. Let's split the difference again, pull that black point back over to zero, grab our white point, move it, move it forward to 50%, and let's add another keyframe. Now, as I scrub through these 40 frames, you can see we haven't quite finished our loop here. We haven't quite finished our loop correctly here. So let's come forward to frame 80, grab our white point, and move this all the way to zero. Sometimes it plays up a little bit for you. So I'm just going to give it a 0 0.01 and I think that'll do it for us. Let's add another keyframe. And now as I scrub through these frames, we get this nice morph of the textures at the same time of the animation between the bottle and the spray can. And this is pretty cool. It's a real simple setup, but it's a nice, easy way to add more detail into your final render. Now, just the same as when we apply this to a plane, we can change the type of gradient that's gonna be driving our animation. So let's have a look at 3D linear. And you can see now as I scrub through this, it almost wipes from the side. And it's great with this because you can get some real unique looks each time. So let's play through this again and have a look at what we've got. We've got a nice transparent bottle. It then spins around, morphs into our real reflective can. So this is a great fun way to just to continue that process and morph between as many different materials as you want to. So I hope you like this quick tip, you can take something away from it, and I'll see you guys again real soon.